Yo, what's good movie lovers? Welcome back to the movie blog where I dissect films with a side of bad dad humor and LOLs. Today we're diving into the world of the underdogs. And yo, my Jesus out here doing big things. So put your jerseys on, get lit, and get ready to sit with Uncle Snoop in this LA-based comedy. The movie opens up with a warning. And yo, pay attention to this warning because this warning right here is trying to let you know that if you are not the type of motherfucking person who wants to watch a motherfucking R-rated movie with a lot of motherfucking cursing, then you may want to think twice about proceeding because this movie right here, <laughs> you've been warned. This movie cuts so much it would make Sam Jackson blush. And that's just the tip of the spear. So I can't wait to get into this movie with you and then dive into my score for the movie. And after i have a special surprise for those of you who stick around after the review so like subscribe and let's get started the movie opens up with what i guess is a flashback to california high school state championship game in 1997 we see george lopez as the coach to this football game where this high school kid named jason jennings makes an incredible catch and wins the heisman trophy and goes on to have an incredible career in the nfl and more more than that he goes on to have so much success earning endorsements and more this young football player is shown to go through a bad streak then in the nfl and has a lot of drama when he's shown to have a lot of issues with people and his teammates and it usually resulted in him being traded from team to team and never actually getting to the point where he won a championship we then find out that this young superstar football player is actually snoop dogg in his youth that was Snoop. Yo, they got Elias Ferguson to play a young version of Snoop. Like, yo, this had me so confused because it felt so awkward. Like, I was laughing, but that was because of how these two don't even look alike. So it's like, is that how Snoop sees himself or saw himself? I'm going to tell y'all right now. When they make a movie about me, I want to make sure that I'm played by a young heartthrob too. I don't care if they look like me or not. Just do what I asked. We didn't see that 2Js is living the life with this incredibly opulent house with images and statues and stained glass windows and Wheaties with his face all over everything all throughout every inch of the place. We see 2J sitting down eating Wheaties and of course his box it's his box it's his version of the Wheaties and he starts doing some waking hate like he just gets mad that people aren't praising him the way he thinks that they should for his football career and he starts getting on his podcast and talking to people in the comments and just going off and he wants to be awarded a podcast on television you know just because he's great anyway he goes and harasses his agent or whatever who is ducking him this is played by Cal Penn and mainly this dude is just downright annoying the hell out of his agent when his agent just explains that people don't want to work with him and like he's just too annoying he's just too vulgar he's just too abrasive and he's just hard to work with it makes it hard for opportunities to come to him if you're just angry and confrontational all the time huh <sighs> anyway he just doesn't want to hear what his manager is trying to tell him tries to leave his agent's office pulls out of the driveway in his expensive lamborghini or whatever and he's a whoa he's immediately hit by a big old bus to the point where i was really sitting here wondering if two j's might have just died and faked this all out but he did and instead he somehow ends up in court for the whole thing and he sends to community service that he somehow convinces the court to allow him to complete by coaching a little league football team and the movie just goes from there it's anything but a seamless transition anyways like i said snoop dogg is the main character and that took me a while and i found myself stuck on stupid just trying to let that sink in like i guess the movie is kind of honest about the fact that snoop is the main character but y'all can't really fault me or blame me for expecting movie marketing to be dishonest right like i'm not the only one who suspected the fake out with the real star being some young unknown actor with snoop appearing here and there throughout the movie and of course all over the movie's posters right anyway yeah snoop is the main character and 
He's playing, like I said, Jason 2J Jennings, a washed up ex-football player who has hit rock bottom. But the defining trait of 2Js is the fact that he's so self-absorbed and vain and selfish and all other variations of that type of behavior in which you only value the opinion, thoughts, and concerns of yourself over all others. You know, a narcissist. And then my guy swears like a sailor, as my mama used to say, he just lets them fly to any and every man, woman, or child, and is downright aggressive with it. It's so f***ing annoying because I know people like that. I thought Mike Epps was cool in this movie. He plays this character named Kareem, who seems real familiar, if you know what I mean. Like, he reminds me of someone I thought I saw last Friday. He's definitely bringing those familiar day day vibes to this role as Kareem, but he's also sprinkling in some of that smoky up in that performance too. And it's like Kareem is smoky and day day all rolled in one. This might be Snoop Dogg's best movie performance. Like, I'm not saying that Snoop is the worst, but he's definitely benefiting from the people around him to make him look better. Sadly, Snoop and Mike Epps are hit or miss with the chemistry in this movie. Crazy thing though, Snoop and Mike seem like they have way better chemistry during the weed smoking scenes. Funny how that works out. And they're funnier together too in those moments. Kareem and his gun, OMG, if you don't just put that damn thing away. Oh, Snoop and Tika Sumter's Sharice have better chemistry and she also can do comedy and show some good comedic timing in the movie. The story is just stupid. Not the plot because the plot is both derivative and generic, but the actual story and execution is dumb. But the co-stars and the supporting cast have great comedic timing and are downright funny as helping to carry this movie. I do at least appreciate that Snoop's 2Js is written consistently throughout the movie and you can easily follow along with his elementary level character arc. Like everything 2Js does is motivated by vanity, selfish, anger, and aggression. Man, this dude need therapy. I have some serious theories on the similarities between 2Js and a specific athlete or two. I'm curious if any of y'all do as well. If you do, let me know what athlete you think in the comments so we can see if we both came up with the same answer. The underdogs tries to be so stupid that it's good and it goes the route of using comedy to achieve that goal with inconsistent results. I do have some concerns of some of the nicknames on the kids' football jerseys, <laughs> Fruit Loop, Chicken Little, Headache, Titties, well, <laughs> okay, everyone loves titties. The movie follows the blueprint when it comes to those reluctant sports coach movies. I mean, it kinda is in its own loped out way, a modern little giants. I I'm torn, yo, I'm torn, yeah, for real. Like, my inner ratchet self wants to love this movie, but my adult, mature, responsible, and more importantly, socially aware self is struggling. But my gosh, do I love that ratchet ass anthem that they come out to at halftime. Little bitch ass, punk ass bitch. Little bitch ass, punk ass bitch. <laughs> and yo, and what's with the American flag waving, aggressive, heads on spikes, football team that prays and stuff like what was up with that the american flag uh. <laughs> yo i i i don't i don't know y'all i don't know what am i gonna do <laughs> let's go this way all right i guess i gotta do it i'm gonna have to give the underdogs a five out of ten i have to that's it but yo, that's all I have for- wait, what? Y'all still here? Y'all ready for the surprise at the end? I got you, fam. Hello, happy Sunday, everybody. I'm Danielle Young. I'm your moderator for the Underdogs Press Conference. Are you excited? Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes. And we have some of the underdogs here with us. Our cast, our beautiful cast. We got Charles Stone III, our director. Yes. 
Yes, Snoop, obviously. Snoop Dogg, our star. Tika Sumter, our gorgeous love interest. <laughs> Crazy Cal. <laughs> Cal Penn over there. And then of our underdogs, we have Jonathan Booth. Woo! Yes. Adon James Carrillo. Woo! Kyla Devia. Yeah. Look at this hair. Oh. Right? We're going to get into them tips. Don't worry. <laughs> Alexander Michael Gordon. Woo! Caleb Dixon. Woo! And Shamori Washington. Woo! Honestly, all of y'all could be a hair ed right today. <laughs> Are y'all kidding me? All these good curls. I'm so excited to talk about this film. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Prime. Um, let's get into it. I want to know from my underdogs, do you know what it means to be an underdog? And have you ever, in your short time here on this earth, have you ever been considered one? Anyone? I'll go. <laughs> oh, thank you, love. So for me, what it means to be an underdog is like you're someone that's always getting counted out. Like no one really believes in you. But then, you know, you know what I'm saying? You shot the world. You know what I'm saying? You showed them what you could really do. And personally, like I would say I've been an underdog, but I'm not no more. But, um, yeah. I give them some. <laughs> preach, preach. Cody. preach. <laughs> I love that. And I know like y'all have been working in this industry for some time and I'm sure throughout your careers, you've experienced it as well. I would love to hear from y'all if you've ever been considered an underdog and how you handled that. Uh, I would say I was an underdog when I, I was. No, that's right. You better jump in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine, baby. Go ahead. <laughs> I would say I was an underdog when I first started my acting career because no one really thought I could do it. No one thought I would go anywhere. People just thought it was a silly hobby. But I proved them wrong, and I kept pushing even through the hate, and now I'm here. Yeah. I know that's right. Yes. All right. Yes. I guess I could say uh, professionally as a, an adult <laughs> in the business, um, to date myself, uh, when I started directing music videos back in 1989. What y'all know about the 80s? Yes. Nothing? Oh. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. My dad yes. was born there. I mean, you didn't have to, you didn't have to keep going. Um. <laughs> but I, re I recall um, wanting to direct music videos. I had just graduated from art school in, in 1988, and I sent my work to a management company that managed the band Living Color, the the rock band, and I remember the manager saying, look, I just can't give you $60,000 and ex expect you to have the know-how to do it, um, but we'll keep you in mind. And um, I stayed the course, and I continued to create like music video ideas in my head and writing them down and just, you know, in mentally staying the course. And then six months later, they offered me $10,000 to do a music video uh, for the song called Funny Vibe off of the Vivid album, Living Color, and that got my feet in the door. You know, and they always say, D don't wait, be prepared. So when you do get called, be ready, like for actors, for all of us, you know, you, if you love your craft. So, but I was considered an underdog, I thought back then, and had to push through. We love it. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Snoop, what about you? Any underdog stories from your career? Yeah, a whole lot. Um, probably with this acting thing in the beginning, you know, you know, sort of kind of like what, what my nephew was saying. Like, they didn't believe that I could be an actor because I was so focused on rapping and not really, like, taking the, the time to think about the, the structure and the skill and the practice and the things that go into it. So I had to, you know, prepare myself to, to get better. But I started off as an underdog where... I wouldn't get roles where they would say, nah, he can't do it. We don't think. So I had to go practice. You know, I had to go get better. I had to go do things to make sure that when I do get an opportunity that they couldn't say no. I love that. That's a good lesson. Don't let the no deter you. Yeah. Get, get practice and get ready, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Tika, gorgeous Tika. Can we just get a little commotion oh. for Hello. Tika? Hello. A goddess. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Wow, you. you're amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I always think about when films like, you know, when films actually end up doing well and studios are like, oh my gosh, we were so surprised, you know? And I feel like I've been in a lot of those kind of films where it's like, whoa, it made this much. And I feel like um, a lot of the times I just wish, you know, 
people would invest more in films like this and, and, and believe because there is an audience who wants to not only see themselves, but they want to see fun. They want to see we they want to see us do different things. So I'll, don't always be surprised when something does really well, uh, studios and everybody else. Um, yeah, I, I always think I'm, I'm part of films like that a lot where they're just like, whoa, you know, it's like believe in the product, put it out there, believe in the people and uh, people will show up. Yeah. And Cal, how about you? Yeah, well, Underdog story? Th this just reminded me of the story about when, when Harold and Kumar go to White Castle blew up, where for, for years, when I was starting out, I went to drama school, I was trying to get my foot in the door, and I kept getting told, well, what part could you possibly play? Because look at you, I'm like, yep. uh, I could play whatever, like what, you know, I, my background's comedy. <laughs> and this was the late 90s, early 2000s, so it wasn't really like that, right? Unless people had an idea in their heads of what you're supposed to look like. And, uh, and I remember seeing, I went to UCLA undergrad, I remember seeing a, a woman, I, I, uh, I can't remember her name, but I remember at the time she was, I think, the, the only black woman on network TV. Uh, and she said, pe people asked her questions in a format like this, and she said, I, um, I just need to, I know that uh, I need to work harder than anybody else who's going out for that job. And I know that, you know, that's why I have an MFA in classical theater. And when I walk into that audition room, if they're sending me home without the job, they know that I know that I was the best person for the job. So I'm ready to work a thousand times harder than everybody else. And that I kind of use that philosophy as the underdog. Then Harold and Kumar go to White Castle comes out and everybody forgets it tanked at the box office. It did not do well. The title wasn't great. <laughs> okay. And I remember in Hollywood, like, what was that, 2004, everyone after it tanked was like, see, we told you two Asian American men just can't open a comedy. And then it comes out on, on DVD and people were buying it. You could thank the hood for that. <laughs> there you go. No. But that, I'm, did they pay for it? Yeah, we, yeah, we paid for it. I, I told you I bought a couple copies and sold a couple copies. Yeah. I paid and I read. <laughs> But you got you, you got your street cred. You in there? Because Indian folks try to take credit, and they they did not buy a copy. They, they gift, gifted each other the DVD. But anyway, sorry, I don't want to take up too much time. That that movie came out on DVD, and and people all over the country, not just in the pockets that studios thought, um, went out and supported it. We got a second and third movie. So to your point, yep. you know, I, I wish that there was a little more attention on. Hey, there are stories that are out there that can do really well. And obviously, the last twenty years, we've we've seen that, especially with technology like Amazon and streaming. So yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, I gotta if I can add. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because it made me think about uh drumline you know it, it's it's one it's about marching bands like people go marching bands and on top of that specifically historic black college university uh style of marching and as much as i love the story and was in, in in doing it and stuff there was the concern that it wasn't gonna take to the quote-unquote mainstream which seems to be the 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 barometer of success is if the if all the public takes it and um but sure enough it did but there was there was you know they were they were kind of conservative with the amount of money they wanted to spend on it because they were all preparing for what they thought would be a very limited run you know what i'm saying and it it broke through the ceiling but yeah. there was definitely the underdog <laughs> mentality applied to that Thank y'all for sharing those stories. What I'm hearing is that you never should just count yourself out, right? Ever. Yeah. Ever. You keep working and you keep pushing. So thank y'all for sharing those gems. I want to remind uh, the folks here that we have some people watching on Zoom. So Zoom people, please use that Q&A function to submit your questions so that we can ask them within the panel. Okay, moving right along. I'm going to talk to my underdogs here. Can you tell me about your time on set? What was it like working with Snoop, working with Tika, working with Cal, working with Charles? What was it like for y'all? Um, for me, I thought it was a really great experience to come and meet everyone here, like um, Charles, Snoop, Tika. And uh, I thought it was really a cool experience to go out and fly out to Atlanta and be able to do many things, not just on set, but also in the city as well. So. I thought it was love great. that you got flewed out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so is it was it your first film like across the board? I know you see you said you've done some stuff. This guy's been in This Is Us before y'all. Yeah, I'll do one thing. He's like, it's a small I'll role. Play one thing. <laughs> but was this your first feature film across For the board? Me, uh, it wasn't my first, but it's my first big film because I've done like other little stuff for other people. But this is my first big movie. 
Yes, I love that we're getting to see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same for me. Um, yeah. This is the first big one mm -hmm. that is streaming on Amazon Prime. And before I did one called um, About My Father, that one I just I played a small little role. So. Yeah. Cool. This, is, this is like my third thing ever, but this is my... Um, my first big thing, like this is my big break, kind of. You know, I didn't look at him. Give him a round of applause on his big break. Yeah, we love to see it. I mean, listen, this is a good thing to be your first to have this type of director and this type of cast. Uh, what was it like working with Uncle Snoop? Did he give y'all some advice on set? A funny Hell no. <laughs> He he's really a grown kid. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah. set, I mean, at least he's on, on, on set. Like he he knows when to be serious, but like sometimes when it was like times where Charles was like saying like what should I do? We was having rap battles. Yeah, <laughs> we would have That's working on your craft. See, look, man. <laughs> I, I I know I know Snoop can rap, but like, he yeah, can, yeah. but he can really bit. rap though. He can oh, really no, rap. but uh, no, all the kids, yeah. he's he's really good. Yeah. Wait, all the kids thought they could out rap Snoop, and I was just staring at them like <laughs> he's been rapping never long gonna long happen. <laughs> Constant, but they did a good try. Constant. It was a good no try. Very, very cute. Very like, cute. But you're not gonna win. How do you think it is? Like I don't. I, yeah, you, you you can rap for real. Like actually. Like, <laughs> I had to I had to show them who I was. They they feel the, like no, they did not know. Remember, they only 13, 14. They don't know no better. So it's like they babies. So I had to, you know, show them some karate skills. You know, kick a few people down and show them what it was about. <laughs> But and like he, they know. but like he said, I'm I'm a big kid and I'm loving this right here. This just feels so. Good. It feel like I'm back in school again. Like I had so much fun working with y'all. That's what y'all don't know. Like I had more fun with y'all than y'all had with me, because like he said, I'm a big kid. I was able to to do some things and try some things and then get with y'all before y'all become real big superstars. This is the beautiful part right here. I can't wait to see y'all in two or three years when y'all in real big movies and y'all forget who I am. Thank you. Thank you. Never or forget. <laughs> I mean, Don't forget to put them in your speeches. <laughs> it's it's also um, what the, what we're like what we're witnessing right now is what we got to be to experience in making the film. Part of the 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 agenda was for the movie to feel grounded, to be grounded and feel real for the culture, and you know in the casting process of of meeting them and then their auditions, it was really strong, but. In terms of what he's talking about here, and the 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 back and forth, and the playing in between sets and uh, uh, takes, and the challenging that these kids would do with you, as well as the there's other young folks who play the other football players, mm -hmm. and I was amazed. But it's what kids do when they feel safe and you know in in an environment that's supportive, they just let it loose, and they were like coming at you <laughs> like kids like swore they could like you know beat them down on 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 the verbals and whatnot and i was amazed but again that's what was so important for me as a director is to have an environment where that can happen because in order that needed to be real for his character to then activate or, or interact with it so it was a blessing that we got who we got yeah. to be in it and they were fantastic so thank you yeah. Yes, solid choices across the board. We love it. I couldn't help. I know y'all have screened it, so you know what I'm about to talk about. But the potty mouth of it all. <laughs> I'm not a prude. You know, I don't have to clutch my pearls or nothing. I know the kids is cool and saying all kinds of stuff. But woo. <laughs> Y'all were y'all were out there. Now you might not out rap Snoop, but you can out cuss him. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> no, 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 maybe not. What was that like? I know you know the language is one thing, and it definitely adds to the comedy. But as as kids, was it? Uh, <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer everybody would have said. Didn't you all? Didn't we all want to cuss as kids in the movie I, and like get I, away I, with it? If there was. I can't even cuss. I'm 40, and I wouldn't do that in front of my mama right today. <laughs> Okay, personally, personally, that's me. Like, I'm a, I'm gonna be respectful because I don't normally, I don't normally cuss like that. Cause you know, I'm respectful to my mom and shit. my parents, <laughs> and you know, I want to be professional with around the directors and the other actors and stuff. But you know, like when it's time to do it, it's time to do it. <laughs> like, let it loose. When I, when I was, nah, they were adding, they were adding more. <laughs> oh, those are ad libs. <laughs> wow. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> When, when the camera was off, they were... No, I'm kidding. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, y'all stop it right now. Stop it. They're like, we're practicing. <laughs> My pressure was high. My pressure was high. 
when I was auditioning, um, I got a call back, and I was in my mom's house because I auditioned at my dad's house the first time. But when I was in my mom's house, I got a call back. I had, I sent my camera ready to curse and like I mean I mean I mean audition. <laughs> my mama, my mama ain't even want to be in the same room. She said I, I can't even be here. Which she went upstairs. She didn't want to hear me curse or nothing. It was, no. Yeah, just look at how cute. Like no, please don't do it. No. But you got you got the job. <laughs> yes. That kind of re that kind of reminds me of a time where I also got a call back, but I was on vacation in Catalina, and we were just out walking, and my mom got a call from my manager saying, "Oh yeah, you have a director's call back," and I was like, "We're out, like doing stuff," so we had to run back to the hotel and do it in the hotel, and I was scared that like the people next to us were gonna like call the police or something, so I was like, "No, no, no, no we're fine," um, and yeah, it was just really funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, while you're talking, Kyla, I would love to dig into your role because look at you in the middle of all these young men representing for the ladies. Oh, girl. For real. Yes. Represent. Strong women with talent. How did that feel when you saw that part, you know, for your role? And, and what does it feel like for you to be uh, a character like this? I am honestly very honored because I... When I was a kid, I used to love to play football. Like I would play flag football all the time, but the boys would always exclude me since I'm a, since I was a girl, and they always thought I was weak. But a uh, funny thing is, I'm a gymnast, so she's strong. I'm strong. I'm pretty strong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very honored to play someone who's like, like gets into that a little bit. She 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 in this movie, she kind of shows that girls can do anything, not just be pretty or just buy makeup or shop she she can play football you know she can oh, really girl, play girl. when you guys see this movie she can she saves she's the ball. yeah she saves the day i'll just say that <laughs> i love that well i would love to know more about the favorite scenes and the favorite moments mm -hmm. that y'all had on set um and tika and cal and snoop you can think about it too but they seem ready <laughs> 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 so should I, I'll start, I'll start at my end over there. Um, tell me, Shamori, what was something that was fun for you on set? Um, something that was fun for me with on set would have to be, you know, the bail house scene. <laughs> <laughs> tell us more, tell us more. All right. Um. <laughs> you got secrets. What? <laughs> all right, all right. Um. Let's see. Trey coming in. Um, it was around the time when Trey was at some point where he was like deciding do he want to quit the football team or not and find out um, Bill having a party and Bill all coming down saying, is this Trey? <laughs> I know he did. Uh, you had to be there, y'all. I know. <laughs> I'm tripping off him because he was so gangster in the movie, and I'm like, you a real, you a great actor, cuz. Cause, <laughs> cause I believed you, I believed you in the movie, cuz. I'm like, damn, you a great actor. <laughs> Look at you, just a young shy kid. Right, I like right. that. That it's, is dope. That's some real actor. You a right great there. actor, dog. Oh, I believe it. That. Okay, anybody else with a fun moment on scene? Yeah. 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 Yeah Half of the people that's sitting here will say the party scene. Party scene. Cause <laughs> listen, y'all bad little. <laughs> listen, the party scene was so crazy. Like we was playing football. Um, we was uh, you know, drinking. If, you know, um, cream soda. Cream soda. It wasn't real. Cream soda. It wasn't real. But you know, I'm not gonna say too much because I know they want to share too. So yeah. Yeah. Um. My, my yeah, my single favorite moment out of the entire movie in the party scene, I threw up on I threw up playing beer pong, <laughs> threw up on the table. Was that real? <laughs> no, it, it, it was completely improv. In he liked it so much, he 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 let me keep it in. He was like, Nah, don't throw up on the floor, throw up on the table. We want to see that. <laughs> the choices, we love that acting choices. Everybody had the same favorite scene, but my favorite part about that scene was 
that scene wasn't directed. Like everything we did was directed. Exactly. That scene was not directed. Um, Mr. Stone said, "Get in the pool and play." We just played, flipped each other over, throwing footballs in the pool. Like it wasn't directed, and we yeah. just had a fun time while that was just recording us. So that was an amazing time. Yeah, it wasn't really um planned out how we were gonna play. We just did our thing. And um, it was fun. We we did the football like it was an actual football game. We played around. We shot each other with the water guns, and it was really cool. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. cute. Yeah. Did you want to share too? Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, one of my favorite parts too was meet meeting the dogs, and they were at the they were in the mansion scene. But that was honestly one of my favorite parts. And um, adding on to John again, um, uh, Charles, he was just like. Go be kids, do, like do whatever, do do whatever you guys do, and <laughs> yeah, I love that. We're gonna take a few questions uh, from the audience and the folks watching. Let me see what we have here, and we oh we also have some from the attendees that they submitted as well. So I'm gonna go with Casey Riger from the Whistle asks Snoop. Who are your top three football, I'm assuming, players to have, yeah, top three players to have come through your football program? And what current NFL team, not the Steelers, <laughs> would you want to coach? Uh, top three kids that came through my football program, uh, Ronnie Hillman, um, uh, John Ross, and Man, I don't know. I'm going to say C.J. Stroud because he's a top two pick. Um, what was the other question? And then uh, other than the Steelers, <laughs> what NFL team would you want to coach? Nobody. <laughs> Just because you tried to bang on me, nobody. Now It what? wasn't me. It wasn't me. That well, was Well, deliver the messenger. <laughs> messenger. Casey, whoever you are, <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay um and i'm just gonna take one from our viewers on the zoom um uh, michael reich from germany's reich film Crichton. i didn't i didn't say let that me help right. you with that michael Crichton's film Crichton. <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's exactly what i meant um this is for tika Humor is very diverse and usually difficult to put into practice. As you've already been in several comedies, how do you approach a project like this and what could you what could you contribute as actors to make the audience laugh? Well, I think first it has to be in the writing, obviously. It has to be a funny script. And I mean, I think again, it's in the casting. Um you know, Snoop is funny and it's crazy because Snoop and I have known each other for whew, my first job was One Life to Live and he was a guest star on One Life to Live. And, you know, he doesn't know it. Well, I don't know if he knows this, but they had other actors at first interacting with him and he was like, no, she should, you know, and, and it was another um, actor on the show. And then Snoop and I have known each other for like, so long that was my first job in the industry so i think it has to do with like connection you know and and you know these kids were so easy to be around sometimes i had to say go sit down you know <laughs> or i had to say you know or i just spoke to them and like hung out with them and talked to them and um i don't know i think it's like collaboration i think uh comedy Comedy is funny. If you try to go set out and say, let's try to make everyone laugh, you're not going to make anybody laugh. But if you are in the moments, have a great director like Charles um, and your, your crew is laughing around you and you have, you know, amazing actors and, and, and people like Mike Epps as well. And I mean, it all just works. It's like a, I always call uh, acting, especially in comedy, it's like a gumbo and you have all the right ingredients that make the thing work. Right. And then hopefully you prepare it and you, you sit it down on the table and hopefully everybody enjoys it as much as we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to add that like with the Sharice character, there's, there are all these moments where, all the crazy stuff is going on around her because she's not expecting what's what's happening. I mean, she's already having to wrangle the kids, right? There's that, and also their 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 cuss words and all that. But there's so many moments, especially the moment where Mike Epps's character is Kareem's giving a speech, his speech because he's now in the role of the main as the coach. coach yeah. And you just have to cut away to her because she's trying to handle the situation that's already dire because. 
Snoop character is not there for the big game and all that. And here is Kareem doing what Kareem does. Way too much. And she's trying to like, yeah, it's all good. And then he's saying foul stuff and she's like, and you know, and then she, you, you elbow yeah. him at yeah. one point yeah, because he goes overboard. And so there's a lot of those moments. Um, or when he does his first speech to the kids and you're sitting there on the bleachers like, oh my God. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just, it, it's what makes the comedy all the more funny it's it's the other half it's the yin to the yang of like he's doing what he's doing and then she's like trying to handle it and react and it's great so i love that, yeah. I love that. well this will be the last question unfortunately um but i would love to take it a little bit more serious um and the idea of this being a black directed film black mostly black cast mm -hmm. black leads mm -hmm. um would you consider this to be a black film and then Furthermore, do you think that that is a conversation that folks sort of stri stray away from in the sense of it being named black this or that? Do you know what I mean? Like, as my mother would say, you, you gonna make me want to smoke a cigarette? <laughs> I already did. So like, you know, you know sometimes yeah, right, right. <laughs> Basically, it comes pre-smoked. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 heavy, uh, but very real and very current. Um, yeah, look, there's a cat from the ooh, 20s, I guess, in 30s, W.E. Du Bois, who said who had this term, the double consciousness, which that people of color are both known to be uh, black Americans and Americans. So we had this duality that we we have to d deal with. Now, some choose to, some don't, you know, and in this case, uh, the first answer is that yeah, this is a movie for everybody, but it's also celebrating a culture that is with people of color, that is African American and so on, and, and Latinx as well. Um, so, um, but yeah, it's 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 very much it's it's both. You, we just have to unfortunately straddle, and we strive for. We try to do that with the word woke, but then folks try to really make that toxic. But I refer to the word woke as mindful. So we got to be more, the world needs to be more mindful of the various cultures and that it's all American. It's not black history, it's American <clears throat> history. So that goes for this movie that it's it's a universal tale, coming of age story about a basically a middle-aged dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, that's universal. So, but yes. And if I could just add, I had a friend who's, I have a friend who's a writer who is not part of the culture or anything like that. And he's like, oh, it reminds me of the bad, the bad news, the bad news bears. And I was like, exactly, except with more curse words. And it's great. And he's like, yeah, I, everybody should watch that. You know, it wasn't like a thing, right? And I think sometimes we have to constantly like tell people, oh, it's a black film or, or not get enough money for this and that it's a film with black people and brown people in it and everybody should see it and it's about football and it's culturally relevant so i just think when they say that when they start saying it's it's a black movie that's just trying to limit it trying to put it to a certain fan base you understand what i'm saying so when they do things like that and, and discredit the fact that it's a great picture with great actors and great people no matter what walks of life they come from because everybody in the movie is not black everybody that worked on the movie is not black yeah. But the people who are the leads in certain parts are black, but that doesn't discredit any and everybody. So I feel like it should just be looked at as a great piece of work like any other project that's not black. So stop trying to put us low and say it's a black movie and just say it's a great movie with a couple of black people in it. Exactly that. Thank you for that. Yeah, a couple. A couple of them. Well, thank you all for watching the Underdogs Press Conference. Thank you all for joining us. For thank, the you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you're an amazing you. moderator. It's awesome. Thank you. Y'all heard that, right, Prime? Keep hiring your girl. <laughs> Keep hiring her, yes. 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 And make sure y'all are going to watch this thing on January 26th. Please, you better. Use your social medias. You. It's hashtag the underdogs with two Gs like Snoop D-O double. Don't, don't forget the G. You can watch it at midnight on the 25th, really, if you if you do what I do. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, go ahead I, I and get in there early. I can't wait till the morning. When 12 o'clock hit or 9 o'clock on the East Coast, me on the West Coast means it's 12 o'clock on the East Coast. So 9 yeah, one you can, you can plug early. and play. Take a flight to the East Coast so you can watch it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look, he, his checks are clearing. He don't even know how to act no more. We see, he said fly in and fly out. Balling. Watch it across the world. Balling. Well, thank you all so much. We're going to say bye to you all watching. Bye. bye. Thank you all. Which way are we supposed to be waving? Hey. That's right. Anyway, that's all I have for this one.
doing as usual if you like these videos like subscribe comment otherwise i'm gonna have to check y'all all later peace